Every now and again, a new genre can creep up on you unannounced, and before you know it, there's a full body of work you don't recognise, until you join the dots. That's what happened to me when I watched Dark Waters and realised that the Mark Ruffalo investigates institutional corruption procedural thriller is a real thing. Ruffalo plays Robert Billot, a corporate lawyer working for American chemical companies. He's approached by a West Virginia farmer through a family connection to the area. The man's cattle keep dying and acting strange. He thinks it has something to do with the DuPont chemical plant just upriver. Billot investigates further and is drawn into an unprecedented industrial pollution scandal that threatens his job, his reputation, even his health. Directed by Todd Haynes, this is essentially a legal procedural that plays out like a thriller, and it's shot like one too. Ruffalo inhabits this murky, cold steel world where the skies are always overcast and fluorescent lit offices are dusty and drab. Within that framework, Haynes humanises this massive slow motion ecological disaster, finding small elements of character in how the story unfolds. On Bilot's first visit to the farmer, Wilbur Tennant, Wilbur brings him into his house and shows him a collection of foil wrapped animal parts, including tumours and blackened teeth. He's unwrapping them, some pickled, some drawn out of his freezer, and places them on the living room table. In the background of the reverse shot on Ruffalo, you can see the man's teenage daughters coming downstairs to watch, see what's happening, why is this stranger in their house, and in the adjoining kitchen, Tennant's wife watches while washing up. It's a really well observed moment that grounds this huge crisis in one man's kitchen. The issue is so present for him that his dining table is the perfect place to explain it, but simultaneously the biological horror of what's happening is so at odds with this domestic setting. Tennant is central to the film, he's played by Bill Camp in a very rough and abrasive role that's excellently realised. He's at 100% intensity in his very first scene, and then slowly this is dialed down. You realise that you're meeting him when he is at the peak of years of fighting this big chemical company. There's a warmth and humanity displayed in the film towards the victims of this disaster, the people of these small towns in West Virginia, and Haynes' wonderful human touch is perfect for bringing that out. But it is a legal drama primarily, and there's plenty of little details to dig in on. Early on, DuPont tries to flood Billot with boxes and boxes of requested records and paperwork. They send so much that there are Christmas cards from the 1950s in there. Between the paperwork, bad cell phone reception, and a loving close-up of Windows 2000 Professional Edition starting up, the film signposts its timeline very clearly, giving a great sense of just how long the case took. On the sidelines in all this is Anne Hathaway, playing Rob's wife Sarah. Herself a lawyer who gave up work to care for their children, her insight and motivation provides support at key moments. These movies often have a subplot where the sad wife sits at home and the guy's relationship falls apart because he's too focused on his work. It's simplistic and rote, and it mostly shows just how prevalent the POV of mostly male screenwriters is. Women are passive obstacles to important work taking place, apparently. Sarah's role kind of goes back and forth on this. At times she fits that to a T, but the depth of her character and her presence in much of the investigation makes it feel more realistic, like normal character interaction. She's exasperated at times, sure, but wouldn't you be after 15 years of getting nowhere? It doesn't just feel like a lazy plot device, and that's aided by Hathaway's well-judged performance. The film has a good sense of how momentum can build behind a cause as well. There's a righteous sense of anger that lingers after the film stops rolling. It's the kind of true story movie that makes you Google everything afterwards just to work out what's still happening and what you can do about it. Now, I don't think the film and the filmmaking in it is going to set the world on fire, but it's a great dramatisation of an important episode in our industrial history, told with a humanistic touch that elevates it slightly above the rest of the similar films in that kind of genre. That's it from me, but as ever, I'd love to have a chat with you in the comments below about this movie. Are you a massive Todd Haynes stan, or are you, like me, always here for a Mark Ruffalo movie? Have a good one. Bye for now.